stand and sing our first hymn, 362, Come Let Us Join Our Cheerful Song. of our Lord Jesus Christ, his bursting from the tomb, his defeat over the power of sin and death. He appeared to his disciples many times and told them about the kingdom of God. Today we recall, we recall how he left this earth and returned to his Father, ascended into heaven to take his throne over all dominions and powers trusting in his reign over all creation and submitting to his kingly yet loving rule. Let us hear the story of his pardon. reading from the Acts of the Apostles 16. One day as we were going to the place of prayer, we met a slave girl who had a spirit of divination and brought her owners a great deal of money by fortune telling. While she followed Paul and us, she would cry out, These men are slaves of the Most High God, who proclaim to you a way of salvation. She kept doing this for many days, but Paul, very much annoyed, turned and said to the Spirit, I order you in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And it came out that very hour. But when our owners saw that the hope of making money was gone, they seized Paul and Silas and dragged them into the marketplace before the authorities. 
When they had brought them before the magistrate, they said, These men are disturbing our city. They are Jews, and we and are advocating customs that are not lawful for us as Romans to adopt or observe. <coughs> the crowd joined in attacking them, and the magistrates had them stripped of their clothing and ordered to be beaten with rocks. After they had given them a severe flogging, they threw them into prison and ordered the jailer to keep them securely. Following these instructions, he put them in the innermost cell and fastened their feet in the stocks. About midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the prisoners were listening to them. Suddenly, there was an earthquake, so violent that the foundation of the prison was shaken, and immediately all the doors were opened, and everyone's chains were unfastened. When the jailer woke up and saw the prison doors wide open, he drew his sword and was about to kill himself, since he supposed that the prisoners had escaped. But Paul shouted in a loud voice, Do not harm yourself, for we are all here. The jailer called for lights, and rushing in, he fell down trembling before Paul and Silas. Then he brought him outside and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? They answered, Believe on the Lord Jesus, and you will be saved, you and your household. They spoke the word of the Lord to him, and all who all who were in his house. At the same hour of the night, he took them and washed their wounds. Then he and his entire family were baptised without delay. He brought them up to the house and set food before them. He gave his entire household rejoice that he had become a believer in God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Seeing that we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, Son of God, let us offer him praise worthy of his name. And we stand and say the glory. For we sing the glory. Eternal life, grant we pray, Almighty God, 
as we believe in your only begotten Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, to have ascended into the heavens, so we in heart and mind may also ascend, and with him continually dwell, who is alive and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We're going to sing our gradual hymn to welcome the gospel, is hymn number 232. Have you got to read it? Oh. to the tree of life and may enter the city by the gate. It is I, Jesus, who sent my angel to you with this testimony for the churches. I am the root and the descendant of David, the bright morning star. The spirit and the bride say, come, and let everyone who hears say, come. And let everyone who is thirsty come. Let anyone who wishes take the water of life as a gift. The one who testifies to these things says, Surely I am coming soon. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. The grace of the Lord Jesus be with all the saints. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus looked up to heaven and prayed, Holy Father, I ask not only on behalf of these, but also on behalf of those who believe in me through their word, that they may all be one, as you, Father, are in me and I am in you. May they also be in us, so that the world may believe that you have sent me. The glory that you have given me, I have given to them, so that they may be one as we are one. I in them, and you in me, that they may become completely one, so that the world may know that you have sent me, and have loved them even as you have loved me. Father, I desire those all also whom you have given them may be with them wherever I am to see my glory which you have given me because you loved me before the foundations of the world. Righteous Father, the world does not know you but I know you and these know you know that you have sent me. I made your known name I made your name known to them, and I will make it known so that the love which you have for which love me may be in them and I in them. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my Redeemer. Jesus lives for all time in glory, and we can live in the fullness of resurrection life straight away. Good morning. Please be seated. As we reach the final part of Jesus' great prayer before his arrest, recorded with such incredible perception and empathy in our Gospel reading by John, surely we cannot fail to be moved by the heartfelt yearning shown there. Jesus truly loves his untidy, raggle-taggle band of companions and longs passionately for them to become bound to their God and to one another as they have already begun to do in his company. And then, suddenly, we find that we too are being prayed for by our Saviour on the very night before he dies. In verse 20 of our Gospel reading, I am praying not only for these disciples, but also for all 
who will ever believe in me through their message. We, here today in this church, or listening in at a time to suit us better than half past ten on a Sunday morning, we are the ones who have come to believe through the witness of the Apostles and the years between melt away as we become aware of the personal handing on in succession one to another down through the generations from these friends to whoever it was who introduced us to Jesus. Can you remember who it was? who introduced you to Jesus? Do you ever think of them? Did you ever have the chance to thank them for opening that door to you? I well remember who it was who introduced me to Jesus because it was my father, my earthly father, my mother went through a succession of very difficult pregnancies and it was left to my dad and I on a Sunday morning to walk up to Ganks Hill to our local St George's Church. And in the summer we would very often stop at the flower cell <coughs> on the back to buy a little bunch of something for my mother on the way home. And our journey to and from church on a Sunday are some of my earliest memories of that time spent with my father. In our readings today, there is such a great air of excitement in them because we don't have to wait to start living this resurrection life that Jesus has promised. Pentecost is only one week away. The Lord reigns. Jesus in his glory is also close with us here and the joy of living the risen life can be quite infectious as the marvellous reading in Acts shows. Luke describes the effects of Pentecost quite graphically. It seems Paul and Silas were at first quite content to let the slave girl direct people to the truth about them. But as it went on, day after day, they must have found it getting to them. And the imprisoning effects of this spirit on that poor girl must also have become increasingly obvious to all around her. Ironically then, it is for liberating her from the spirit that these two friends are beaten black and blue and thrown into prison. But before I move on to that, I have asked a few friends to bring with them this morning any awards they have been given and to give us an insight into the standard necessary to achieve such an award. So please, has anyone remembered and are you brave enough to come forward to the microphone and share with us what you have been awarded? I could only find a very serious envelope, the one I really wanted to bring. I had a swimming badge from when I was six. I'm fully qualified to collect a brick from the bottom of the swimming pool while dressed in my pyjamas. <laughs> and I got an award for writing a story in, an ad, in a competition by Lucas Aid. <laughs> so we'll start with, because uh, Christine said, you know, the amount of work that you need to do to get an award. Mm -hmm. 
So uh, this is my second set of O-level certificates. Five years. That's my O-level certificate, three years. That's my university degree. Um, theoretically three years, more realistically two and three quarter years plus a quarter of a year playing table tennis. <laughs> and as you get older, you get to do stuff like um, the School Business Management Development Workshop run by the Department of Education National College for School Leadership, where you get a certificate for turning up. <laughs> This is quite recent. I took up tennis in retirement, so it's never too late. This is, I always call it the uh, trophy for the winner of the losers. <laughs> I entered tournaments after I'd had coaching and played quite a lot of tennis. And the one tournament I went in, if you lost in the first round, you went through to the plate. I, all the losers went into the plate, and I won with my partner. Mm. <laughs> so really, it's just to show that it's never too late to try. And it's been very good to fit into the village. Um, we were new to the area to make friends, keep fit, because it's all weather. And during COVID, it encouraged me to take up jogging because I couldn't play tennis. So really just encouraged, don't, don't give up, try something new, even in retirement. <coughs> I only got two O levels, so I didn't bother to keep the certificate. I never got any A levels. Um, I can't play tennis, and I've never done anything apart from I've got the Wii um, OBE. Uh, I'm not sure what OBE stands for. Ask Ruth because she knows clearly what it stands for. Um, and this is a strange one because you don't set out to get it. Um, you can't say, "Can I have one?" It just uh, it needs um, a collection of people. Um, to submit uh, a note uh, to whoever looks at it uh, saying this guy uh, or woman um, deserves it. And so therefore you can't, it's not a goal you can head towards when you get it, you think, well, that was us. I don't use it uh, at all in, in um, what I do. Perhaps I should have it on a PCC, goodness knows why, but I don't. I sort of keep it under the uh, radar because it's awarded really to then open doors further so that people can say, oh, He's, he knows what he's doing in that. And mine was about acting as a, an advocate for patients and the public as a, versus the government. So, so that's a good cause. But um, shortly after I received it, uh, I retired. So it was a bit hopeless, really. <laughs> so the key to the door is doors that I've never got to open. But you know, it is the only thing I've got. I probably tried to bring it along. But I just thought, uh, well, it never comes out of the bookshelf. There it is. Um, uh, but it's a different sort of award. Thank you very much. Thanks. Well, following that. <laughs> well, the, I couldn't find any awards that the uh, that you usually get O levels and A levels, diplomas, etc. So, what the one I really wanted to bring was uh, a little statue with a plaque that said "Sex God of the Year, 1993." <laughs> Thanks for the laughter. <laughs> this one, my wife didn't before. Um, but I couldn't find that either. So the only thing I've got is this award for a car, which is uh, uh, Battles Bridge, Best American Car 2011. And I think what this reveals is that your church wardens are a lot more shallow than you. <laughs> <laughs> I do have an award. Um, highly embarrassed to share with you, really, because it didn't require any effort at all. Um, and this is the award that I got, which looks fabulous, doesn't it? Um, but it was awarded by the um, IT ser digital services at my place of work after they did a week of really the most dull training ever on, um, I can't remember what it was now. Um, Data protection, that's it, data protection. And they gave me this award for being enthusiastic about it. <laughs> I felt so sorry for them. Um, so I think, I don't know if there's a message behind it, but perhaps just um, sometimes enthusiasm is enough. Thank you so much. Is there anybody else that has a really 
interesting or dire award that they would like to share with us? Well, I don't have all of your contact details, so the people who I did have and I, I asked have sent me things, and I just want to share a few of them with you. Graham Spearman, he says, Christine obtained this qualification in my 60th year. It enabled me to continue working for another 10 and a half years. And it's the MVQ Level 4 Diploma for Financial Advisors. And I, I'm, I may be wrong here, don't quote me, but I think that's almost the first year of a degree course. Mm -hmm. So I think that's an incredible thing to do at the age of 60, because it's, it's not quite so easy to sit down and study as you get on in years. And Geraldine, this is her award. This is a certificate of accommodation awarded to Geraldine Spearman by the Essex branch of the British Red Cross for meritorious service. And she says, I worked for the Red Cross, managing services for vulnerable people across three counties. I was proud to work for the Red Cross and it was lovely to be recognised in this way. Plus, I love the word meritorious. It sounds so very grand. <laughs> so that's Geraldine and Graham. And Kath, Kath Atkins has obviously been a very busy girl because she sent me a whole rack of things. First place certificates in um, the Hornsey Music Festival, age 9 to 11 for girls solo. Um, there's certificates of merit. She said to me there were rose bowls that she was pre presented with and cups. But of course they have to go back at the end of the year because presumably somebody else stands up and wins that award. So instead of keep on buying new ones, the powers to be grab it back from you. Um, and there's another interesting one here. She has a cycling profici proficiency certificate. I don't think I've ever seen her on a bicycle, but there you go. And she's got, she swam a distance of 10 meters across Driffield swimming pool using freestyle and that was 1968 so I wouldn't hazard a guess as to how old she was then but clearly not that old because it's not that long ago and the other person that came back to me was Reverend Hillary and she says academically of course the license to serve in this parish but did you know she also has a Starlight Salsa Basic Dancing Certificate? <laughs> and a 10 kilometer beachy head medal from 2019. And her John, she says, has marathon medals in the plural. So hidden talents there. And I asked her, you know, had he ever done the London Marathon or the New York Marathon? And she said, no, the Beachy Head Marathon. So I don't know which other ones he's done. Perhaps you can ask them when they get back. So what an incredible list. This is surely something to celebrate. And I'm sure lots of you have similar awards that you have been honoured with. And it doesn't matter if you were school age, or a brownie, or a scout, or leaving school, or leaving college, or much older than that, when you were given an award, it brings a great sense of achievement. It's taken time to learn, perhaps to read, and to practice to reach the required standard needed to gain your award. And I think it is all worth
worth celebrating. So perhaps you join me in giving all these very clever people a round of applause. So now I'm going to pop back to where I left. When Jesus entered heaven, about 40 days after he had come back to life on that very first Easter day, I'm sure the whole of heaven gave him a hero's welcome. They said he was worthy to receive power and wealth and wisdom and strength and honour and glory and praise, everything good that they could think of. And they wanted to honour Jesus like this because he had managed to do such an incredible thing. He had lived a human life here on earth and still had gone on loving all the way through it without once giving in to temptation, turning against God's will or putting his own wants first. Through loving people enough to die for them, he had been able to break the hold death had over all of us. So now we can live freely and happily in God's company. And perhaps another round of applause is needed here for Jesus, for all that he has done for us. to Kath's 10 metre swimming badge. I have made these blankets for my grandchildren and the very first badge that went on Finley's was this little one at the bottom which says the Kellogg's ASA Duckling Award Level 1 Aww. and that was his equivalent of being able to swim across one width in the small pool in the old Branston swimming pool. Now he, he was a child that as soon as you took him near water he screamed and he screamed and he screamed and I used to be asked to go outside and leave him to the teachers and after about a month he stopped screaming and when he came home with this little badge and a little certificate, we took photographs and made a big fuss of him, as I'm sure you did with your children or your grandchildren when they have been given such an award. And I'm sure Wendy made a big fuss of Lester when he was given his OBE. And I too know, coming from a services background, yes. OBE stands yes. for, but I won't say it here because we're on camera. So it's just as if there is the most wonderful pool. Just, I beg your pardon, I've skipped a paragraph, I've got to go back. Swimming is an important achievement for a little person, and even not such a little person. And what God is saying to us today is that Jesus won the victory for us. So each and every one of us is able to live this wonderful life in his company. Just the sort of life we saw Paul and Silas living. <laughs> there they were, thrown into prison, sitting bruised and bleeding, locked into one painful position into the stocks. And what did they do? They sang their hearts out in the middle of this very nasty, worrying situation. They are singing out, praising their God. That is living out the new type of life. It's just as if there is this wonderful pool just waiting for us to enjoy. But perhaps we are standing at the very edge of it, 
looking down into the water, holding tightly onto our badges or our certificates. Instead of taking a deep plunge, stepping off into the unknown water, splash! So let us be brave. Take the plunge into the life Jesus has won for us and enjoy it to the full. Amen. Christine didn't tell us that her water. <laughs> She's awarded um, our evangelist, our preacher. So let's stand and give glory to God and confess the faith in three people. We believe in one God, our Lord, 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 church and for the world, and let us thank God for his goodness. We pray for the leaders of our church across the world, that their voice may be clear in speaking out against tyranny, murder, war, injustice and hate, that they may lead their people in the ways of peace, acceptance, forgiveness, healing and love that they may be effective pastors and teachers, equipping their people for good works and living the gospel. We pray for all of those who are oppressed by persecution, hate, ridicule and indifference. Give them your strength to endure as you did. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our own church here. We give you thanks for Reverend Hilary and Derek and for all those who serve and minister here. We pray for ourselves that as we look forward to Pentecost that we may show the fruits of your Spirit. We pray that we may be a welcoming church, a church that displays your love and displays your life to all who enter here. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our world. We think especially of the people of Uvalde in Texas, in Buffalo, New York, who have lost loved ones in the senseless killings. For the families and parents of those who lost children in the school in Texas for the lost potential that their lives represented. And we pray for those in the police service there who must live with the knowledge that had they acted sooner, lives might have been saved. 
we pray for the people of Ukraine, being pummeled by callous military indifference to their civilian status, for the refugees fleeing for their lives, for those suffering the effects of climate change and resource exploitation, for those in poverty and famine. Lord, in your mercy, hear yeah. our prayer. We pray for our own nation. And as we look forward to the Jubilee celebrations, we give thanks for the servant leadership of Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth, that her example of quiet faith and integrity might still be a light in this country. We pray for our political leaders, that they may lead with honour and integrity, and not be confused that not breaking the rules is not the same as not doing them wrong. Lord, in your mercy, yeah. hear our prayer. We give thanks for our own community, for the welcome that people have here, and we pray especially for all of those who have joined us from Ukraine, that they may settle and be welcome in this place. Lord, in your mercy, hear yeah. our prayer. We pray for those who are sick or in need. With a moment of silence, we call to mind those who are known to us. Give them comfort in their time of affliction and healing in their time of illness. And we pray for those who care for them, that they may have the endurance and fortitude as they look after those whom they love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. With our Holy Nicholas and all your saints, we look forward to the time when we too may join you in heaven and sing your praises for eternity. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Thanks, Ray. Jesus saying, says, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. If you love me, rejoice, because I am going to the Father. Hallelujah. Yeah. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let us offer one another a sign of peace. Peace be with you. Number 422, Hallelujah, sing to Jesus.
creation is renewed, by whose love heaven is opened, by whose mercy we offer sacrifice and of praise. The Lord is here. His spirit is with us. Lift up your heart. He to the Lord. As you thank the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is indeed right and good, our duty and our joy, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Jesus Christ, the King of glory. Born of a woman, he came to rescue our of, came to the rescue of our human race. Dying for us, he drank from death and conquered sin. By the glory of his resurrection, he opened the way to eternal life. By his ascension, he gave us sure hope that where he is, we may also be. Therefore, the universe resounds with peace and joy, with choirs of angels we sing forever to your praise. Sins 
sinned against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, power, and glory of the Lord is now and ever and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ.
Thou shalt be brought that nourish with such spiritual blessing it may set our hearts in the heavenly places. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. We say it again. We thank, thank you, Lord, that we have fed us in this sacrament, in the eyes of this Christ, and given us, us a holy taste of the heavenly banquet prepared for all the peoples. Amen. reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Dear Theophilus, in my first book I wrote about all the things that Jesus did and taught from the time he began his work until the day he was taken up to heaven. Before he was taken up he gave instructions by the power of the Holy Spirit to the men he had chosen as his apostles. For forty days after his death he appeared to them many times in ways that proved beyond doubt that he was alive. They saw him, and they talked with him about the kingdom of God. And when they came together, he gave them this order. Do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift I told you about, the gift my father promised. John baptised with water, but in a few days you will be baptised with the Holy Spirit. When the apostles met together with Jesus, they asked him, Lord, will you at this time give the kingdom back to Israel? Jesus said to them, The times and occasions are set by my Father's own authority, and it is not for you to know when they will be. But when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, you will be filled with power, and you will be witnesses for me in Jerusalem, in Judea, and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. After saying this, he was taken up to heaven as they watched him, and a cloud hid him from their sight. They still had their eyes fixed on the sky as he went away, when two men dressed in white suddenly stood beside them and said, Galileans, why are you standing there looking up at the sky? This Jesus, who was taken from you into heaven, will come back in the same way that you saw him go to heaven. This is the word of the Lord. Sponsory, as we wait in silence, make us ready for your coming spirit. As we listen to your word, make us ready for your coming spirit. As we worship in your in you in as we worship you in majesty, make us ready for your coming spirit. As we long for your refreshing, make us ready for your coming spirit. As we long for your renewing. Make us ready for your coming spirit. As we long for your equipping, make us ready for your coming spirit. As we long for your empowering, make us ready for your coming spirit. Amen. Well, I think the notices are fairly clear. Uh, no, we need to just see some. Just to emphasize one, please. Um, the summer fair, um, all the bits and pieces that go with it. So, just to highlight the names of the people in there who will be gladly receiving from you.
you, I hope, all the bits and pieces. Thank you very much. You stand for our blessing, please. May the Spirit who set, who set the church on fire upon thy on the day of Antichrist bring the world alive with the love of the risen Christ and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Our recessional hymn is hymn number 612. Christ triumphant ever green. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.